Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep. Awesome. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep. Awesome. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep. Awesome. Hello, can you guys hear me? No, I have never played that. Oh, yeah, yeah.
Um, I'm there. Hello, everybody, by the way. Uh, I'm listening to see if I can hear it. It sounds good. Wait a second, Daryl, um, your voice isn't on there, just mine. <laughs> that might be a problem. <laughs> Basically, I was talking for myself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I hope that someday we can get like emotes on a uh, Archeo Gaming Con Twitch and that can have like there can be one for technical difficulties for everybody to just be like spamming that during the first 15 minutes. <laughs> A gif of a panda breaking a computer on a desk or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. How's everybody doing tonight? Nice quiet day. <laughs> I'm going to say something that makes me uh, that is going to make me sound like such a jerk, but I live in New England, so I hope you can forgive me for it. <laughs> the, temp the temperature hit 82 today, and I am so hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably humid there, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's half of the bottle. God, it was like uh, 20 degrees a couple nights ago. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, I guess I guess it's more of afternoon. It's just been storming here, and there's I think that day the highest it got up to was like forty degrees. So having a weird weather, having a bit of weird weather here in Washington. Yeah, yeah, I know we're broken. Oh, so wow. What's a storm? <laughs> Daryl and I don't know what storms are. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to like check with myself when I said that. I was like, wait a second, Remember Cali those? folks, what the storm <laughs> is? Here, here's the question: Am I the <laughs> only one here who has to deal with uh, major snowstorms? Um, yeah, we get some, but not nearly as bad as you guys. No, no, we had we had one a few years ago. We sent my um, my sister in law in Fort Worth, Texas, a picture. We had snow that was uh, four foot hot, four feet of snow in one snowstorm. Oh my god, four feet! Wow. Yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. 
Yeah, we don't uh we don't get those. I I remember when I was a kid, like we would get like more snowstorms, but now it's just kind of been ice storms and things like that here. Um ice storms are no joke. No, they're no joke, but yeah, we don't deal with snow as much um increasingly so in Washington, but Yeah. Yeah. If you if you ever want to see what my um the worst blizzard my wife remembers when she was four years old. Google the blizzard of 78. That was rough. <laughs> also, the use of the word blizzard, too. You know you have it bad when you call a snowstorm a blizzard. Yeah, I remember snow days <laughs> living in Chicago. <laughs> snow days, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of like our wildfire days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guess we're all here. Should I announce on the Twitter that we're live? That's a dirty word, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. Done that. Only people following it is all of us, but I mean, just in case one of us forgot that we're live, there it is. <laughs> Oh, Fred. I can't I can't wait to inadvertently cause his death. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait until he's an inadvertent discovery. <laughs> oh.
bunny ears? That was a fail. <laughs> Big fail. Well, that was my idea, so that's on me. Tried. <laughs> that's my that's my big mistake. No. Now I think that we capped it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have it pulled up. Let me check real quick. Okay, say something. Well, myself, but I did not hear you, Daryl. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> So you just explained all this stuff, and I don't think anybody heard. We're gonna you need probably. a second recap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Alonzo! Welcome to the stream. My f my friend Alonzo says, "Don't worry, we'll match, and we can hear you." <laughs> I've got that pulled up now. Forgot to keep checking the comments. 
Hang on, say something again. <laughs> no, that's weird. You know, Daryl, you have such beautiful drawings. I just had an image of my head of one of these drawings with a bunch of goblins trying to fix things with a great big, like, old TV sign that says technical difficulties. Yes. <laughs> That's one that we need. Yeah, we need, like, a, you know, like how, goblins like, a... trying to trying to fix things with, like, wires everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Like a BRB what? screen, we just need that for to put up whenever we're having technical difficulties. Just like we'll be right and, and back. It's, and it's not you, Daryl. Just to be clear, it's not you. It's it's it's, it's the very very. I I've tried doing this streaming thing before, and it's an absolute nightmare. So yep. I, I feel you. It's not it's not you. It's the process. Yeah. And this one's so complex because we want the recordings too. Like I've done I've done a stream now and. Getting it up is one thing, but then when you've got the recordings too, I don't even know how to do that. And then on different platforms, it's crazy what we're trying to do here. Is, is there any way that this could be connected to the 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 two different logins on Roll20? Like, I'm just thinking if one is assigned to one thing instead of another, then... Okay. Gotcha. I'm all out of fresh ideas then, because my six-year-old needs to teach me how to operate the electronics in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other thing I can think of is if you go into... Um, here, let me open OBS so I can visually see what I'm talking about. In the audio mixer, there's the little cog next to each... Um, audio input so you have your desktop and your mic if you go in there and go into no not properties and to advanced audio properties see it i, I messed up i called it, i checked the wrong one yeah because okay. first yeah i it was weird like it wasn't detecting the microphone at first i guess and i hadn't noticed that when i tried to tick that it didn't go all the way i guess i don't know okay because sometimes like I had this problem before, and it had to do with um, where the tracks are at and making sure that the right boxes were picked so your sound came through. Okay, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm on the stream now, huh? Yay! All right. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> uh, all right, so I guess let me recap. <laughs> let me recap. From the start. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here 
to Goblin Town. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> was way more from the balcony than the first time. <laughs> um. So I'm going to recap uh, the adventure from two weeks ago. So let's see here. Uh, okay, let me. I guess I have to move everybody out of the way here because they're kind of in the way. <laughs> okay, well, I guess let me. Uh, I'll just get rid of them then real quick. Okay. So, uh, last time, or well, uh, two sessions ago, uh, the group had been attacked by tick monsters. They were able to defeat them valiantly, uh, although not without struggle. And they were able to, and that happened about here. Uh, the next morning, they were able to cross over the top of the mountain um, and make their way down. Uh, they did discover that uh, Gradol seemed to have contracted Lyme disease. Um, Dagmar had uh, discovered a rash on him while helping him up over a boulder. Uh, they continued down the mountain uh, and did their best to avoid the tech monsters, which they did largely. Um, but they did come across a, a group of them feeding on the corpse of a protoceratops. They were able to sneak around uh, the group by stealthily passing through the trees and also, uh, with the help of Gradol, casting a sort of natural flower-based, of course, flower-based uh, insect repellent. Uh, eventually, they reached their bottom uh, and w without any further incident, as they were setting up a uh, camp for the night, they noticed the smoke uh, out on the horizon. Uh, smoke from somewhere in this general area it seemed to be someone, someone else doing a campfire. Uh, the night passed without incident, and they woke up the next morning and continued following uh, this stream here in the hopes of bringing themselves, uh, of hoping, uh, following the stream to as close to the mesa as they could. Eventually, they ran into a group of people. So I'll put those pictures back up. So the group of people... Let's see. There was a hobgoblin. Four goblins. Let's see, let's get the other one. Here we go, we got bunny ears. Oh wait, no. I wanted the human first. I have to do it in a specific order, that way that the objects like stack properly. The drunks stack properly. And the bunny ears. Okay. All right, there you go. So there you have it. Those are the six people that you're following. The... The Gradle came to the conclusion that these were looters. They're heading toward the Mesa themselves to find artifacts uh, to dig up loot and sell. Uh, the the party came uh, uh, developed a plan in which a theory would talk to them and try to convince them that they were uh, that they they could be friends and that they could work together. 
Uh, unfortunately, the theory is not a very good liar, but neither are they. So, <laughs> no one was quite able to convince themselves to trust each other. But everyone was pretty uh, understood very easily that everyone was lying. So, uh, this group pretty of people much. got uh, got spooked. Uh, and then they they ran off. They tried to to run away from the from our party. The party followed in hot pursuit, but it seems that someone cast a spell, uh, a darkness spell, which created a large stone of blackness uh, that's that hindered the path of our adventurers. Atheri, Kinera, and Dagmar gave up the pursuit, uh, but Gradal. A wild shaped into an owl, a white owl, if I remember correctly, and flew up and over, and follow and continued to follow uh, this group of six people here, and that's where we left off last time. Uh, so, Gradall flying off toward the mesa, chasing after these people, and Dagmar, Assyria, and Genera left behind. Trying to figure out what to do next. So go ahead, uh, a theory, Genera, uh, Dagmar. What do you do? Time is it again? This would be sort of like midday. Okay. I think. Wow. I thought we were going to wait to see if Gradle came back. <clears throat> or keep walking in that general direction and see if we see him flying back around to look for us. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I thought we were trying to keep an eye on him, but not necessarily catch up with him. Just stay, you know, stay where we could see him. But we could be waiting to forget no i i do hate to point this out but i think uh daryl you had pointed this out at our last game that because i was on the other side of the darkness sphere no one actually saw me transform into an owl <laughs> Oh, oh, so shoot. from this perspective, oh my God. I would have just yeah. vanished. Well, we found out from Fred, remember? Because Fred had come running up and saw That's right. you That's run right. off. Fred and then, Yeah, and so we had asked Fred. And that's when we Mark. decided, we were like, okay, well, we probably should hide ourselves, but keep an eye out for, for you if you come back. Okie dokie. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to continue in that general direction. I mean, we know they're going to the Mesa, so we might as well continue towards the Mesa. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, the, the Dome of Blackness drops fairly quickly, so you can continue heading north at your will. So, let's see here. Boop, 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 boop. So there you have it. You're headed toward the Mesa. Are you going to, like, try to run after him or, or after them or anything in particular? No, I, I think we had decided just to hang back since since Gradall was going after them. And I think also we didn't want to potentially um, give away that Gradall is the owl. Not that they would necessarily know that anyway, but... <laughs> okay, well, let's... Let's... Let's see something here. Okay. okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do is 
have that painting. <laughs> That's so pretty. It is. It really is, yeah. Daryl. Oh. Thank you. Uh, don't worry, I'll add the spaceship in later. <laughs> oh, it's just so soft and pretty. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. The looks can be deceiving. I'm kidding. Oh, oh, I, I shouldn't spoil things. Sorry. Here we go. Roll. Okay. Um, so, at the moment, Gradal, the group that you're chasing uh, does not notice you. Uh, Do I need to roll a stealth check? To, well, I mean, uh, how can stealthy can you be? You're a bird in the sky where there are no clouds or anything. True. Oh, but they largely don't no, no, notice you. They, they, there are other are birds they, and things like that, so you don't really stick out anyway. Are they still um, running at, at top speed, or have they slowed down some? Uh, they're booking it. They they keep going as fast as they can, but you can catch up fairly easily. Uh, because of an owl, I believe your fly speed is a sixty, and they're each of them only has a, a speed of thirty. Okay. So, yeah. I I guess I guess I'll I'll keep a pace with them until they slow down or stop to take a rest. Okay. Yeah. Let me see here. Yeah. So they they're running for quite a while. They don't their pace does slow down a little bit. They get fatigued uh somewhat. So but they they do keep running for like like 10 minutes. So they're they're fairly far away from the group now. And then they slow down. Um uh, How close do you follow them? Uh I'll stay back within visual distance i'll keep back like 120 feet or so uh i'm trying to think now but like how high above the ground are you just in the tree line Ow owls don't tend to fly above mm -hmm. the trees very much well that's the thing of the painting that there are no trees here <laughs> oh okay so yeah so they might might start to uh, to get suspicious. So are they are they following a path straight to the mesa? Yeah, they're basically beelining for the mesa now at this point. Hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to imagine you being an owl and like, who don't notice me? Who? Yeah. Good thing they don't yeah. turn around. Yeah. Or look up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I, I was hoping that they had stopped so I could go back and, and let them know their location. But if they're beelining to the Mesa, my concern is is that if if I just go back and then we follow them at our own pace, they have time to, to lay a trap for us, Impossibly. which worries me. Or, or to loot the place before we can... Uh, before we can get to them. Oh, I mean, how fast can a person loot a site? I mean... You'd be surprised. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, well, oh, good golly, are we going to have to talk about this at the con? <laughs> Probably. Probably, yeah. yes. And I'll have to do my grad all voice the entire time, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, the... All right, so I think what I'm going to do is, since they don't appear, I can't stop them on my own. And I'm not sure I want to try talking to them because that didn't work before. So I think I'm just going to fly back to the group and report that they're basically beelining it for the Mesa. Okay. They probably think we're competition. Not sure. I mean, could be. I. I, I they mean, may think we're competition. They may think we're bandits. They may. They may think any number of things. So. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the group. All right. There you go. That oh. withholding and, information DM voice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, circle back around them and. Just to express my frustration, 
I'll do what all birds do, especially over my car before I head back. You're going to no. poop on them? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. I just had to turn around and head back. Okay. I was about to say, like, you know, role-playing allows you to take on other roles. <laughs> yeah, in, 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 my, in my driveway, there's a great big maple tree right at the end of my driveway, and I can't park my car anywhere in my own driveway. It is, it is challenging. <laughs> Tremendous. I didn't mean that pun. I did not mean that pun. That's just something I always say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So, uh, Gradal, uh, you return to the group. Uh, explain to the group how you come back, and the group explain what you're looking for or what you're doing. I'll go to Gradal first. Okay. And uh, so they're just sort of beelining it to the mesa. They're definitely going to beat us there. Uh, unfortunately, I I can't stop them on my own, but uh, I figure we can catch up to them. My only concern is. You know, whether they might loot the place before we get there, or worse yet, lay a trap for us. Well, then I guess we probably should be fast about getting there. Hmm. <laughs> Couldn't we pass without a trace by the time we get there, Dagmar says? Um, very... Third wall, third wall breaking, third <laughs> wall breaking. <laughs> hmm. uh, I, I, I could do pass without a trace, but that would reduce my number of second level spells to just one left, because we already, I already used the lesser restoration. Hmm. Yeah, he had to cure himself of Lyme disease. Yeah, that's right. That. Lyme disease sucks, folks. Check yourself for ticks. <laughs> carry a carry carry a tick key with you. Yeah, exactly. Take ticks seriously. But uh, what if when we got there, if you turned into that owl form of yours again and kind of took one for the team and see what awaited us at the top of the mesa when we get there? I could Perhaps. definitely give it a shot. I could definitely give it a shot. Um, I might turn into something other than an owl, though, because there are no longer any trees in the vicinity. I'm very lucky they didn't see me. So maybe this time I'll turn into something a bit more mesa-y? Like a, a vulture or something? I don't know what would be, you know, you Southwest archaeologists, what, what hangs around mesas? <laughs> What's mesa wildlife? Uh, we have eagles, we have turkey vultures, we have hawks, we have... Red-tailed hawks. Oh man, I yeah. see the one nearby that's huge. Um, I, I could do a red-tailed red hawk, but God, Gradol definitely seems more like a tur turkey vulture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it works. Yeah. All right, shall we? Okay. All right, so you're a turkey vulture. Uh, you can oh, only no, transform no, no. I mean, no, twice a day. I, uh, well, I'm not turning into a turkey vulture yet. We're gonna get there, and then I'm gonna transform and scout the top of the mesa. Okay. In terms of wild shapes, checking my options, uh, I can wild shape twice a day, so I can only do it one more time. No. If I have a short, it's twice per short rest. Ah. So if I have a short rest, then we can, then I can transform again. All right. Good to know. Good to know. But it's, but it is twice per short rest. So you do have one more. I do have one more. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay then. So you begin to try to start the, the Mesa. Uh, are you going to, like, hustle it? Just take your time? What's up? Yes, hustle. All right. Because we, we don't want to give them any more time than they already have gained on us. Yeah. Okay. 
So let's see. So you're going to get closer to the mountain here. Let me see. Uh, there we go. All right. I'll put that down, put that down. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. You hustle as fast as you can uh, along the stream. Or, well, no, actually, you have to leave the stream behind and you're coming up toward this way getting closer and closer toward the Mesa. Um, I want you, you... You need to figure out how to find them again. Because at this moment, you have no idea what to look for. Um, the, you were able to follow some of the tracks along the stream for a little while, but they left the stream behind quite a while ago. So, either at this point, Gradal will have to transform into a turkey vulture to scout ahead, or you're going to have to do something else in order to pick up the trail again. I so, can definitely scout, but I can only stay in wild for, wild shape for two hours. Would I be able to get to the mesa, circle around, and report back within two hours? It's a pretty big mesa. I mean, like, so let me let me. I'm gonna move these all these pictures down here to the bottom a little bit. Oh, oops. Oh, whatever. Um, so, remember that... Okay, I accidentally moved it when I moved those pictures. <laughs> but that purple, if you remember that the... Uh, the... The purple shapes that you had, like right there, and... So, you started... I don't know if you can see that at the bottom of the screen. Oh, whoops, that's not... So your first travel up this way, coming up from the town, was one day. Going down the mountain to here was another day. And this now is your final day of journey. So, as you can see, the mesa itself is almost as wide. Uh as a straight shot, as a day's worth of journey. Now, it wouldn't actually take you a day to walk across the top of it because it's flat, um, unlike the mountains, which have a lot of uh, uh, trees and shrubs and foliage, and you could not walk a straight line. So it's quite large. Um, you, I don't think you could actually fly all the way around it uh, and back within two hours. Even if, um... Even if we took off from the base of the Mesa? Well, so if you stopped at the base of the mesa and then and then did that, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, but the thing is that by the That's time you get to the base thinking. of the mesa, it would be getting dark. Hmm. Perhaps a animal that can see in the dark. Well, that's. That's. It makes sense because, you know, hey, if it's at nighttime. Then I can do an owl instead of a turkey vulture. Okay, tell, and you have to tell us which owl. We don't <laughs> want to get the ornithologist mad. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> you know, there are actual desert owls. Are you going to do a burrowing owl? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Are desert owls burring owls? I yeah, that's the most common one we have out here. Then we'll go with the desert owl. And they do fly, right? I know that they they yeah yeah, I, yeah. I, I I've scared plenty of them and seen them take off. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're also they're also um, elf owls. In the uh, but they're super small. I love how Gradal has infinite knowledge of any kind of animal species species or breed, 
it's, le- <laughs> it's less that than Mike actually has access to Google. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't Gretel have had to have seen these animals and been to these different, like, vast terrains to know? Or Not really, kind of... not really. I'll, I'll, I'll go with whatever the DM thinks I will have had experience <laughs> with in terms of owls. Uh, I mean, I'll just... Go I did. Cause, cause whatever I'm, owl is long as the Darryl, common you... owl, I... Yeah. I, you know I, the world a lot better than I do. The 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 only thing that I recommend for the only thing that I require from you, uh, uh, Gradle, is that you have to do uh, an owl call if you want to transform into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a comment in chat too. They don't fly; they just glitch away. It's <laughs> true. It's true. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Um... <laughs> So I okay. will I will do my my second wild shape and I will transform into a desert owl. All right. Okay. Okay. So you transform. Okay. Now, uh, where do you take off? Actually, so you take off before you hit the base of the mesa or at the base of the mesa? Uh, at the base of the well. Yeah, I don't know if they would have gotten to the far end of the mesa. <laughs> yeah, I I think yeah, I th- I think we'll take off uh close to the base of the mesa just as it's getting dark because it would make sense that owls would be taking off just uh, and searching for prey just at dusk. Okay. All right. Okay, so it is. You're now coming into dusk, moving into the twilight hours, when you hit the uh, base of the mesa. Um, so the rest of the group, what do you? So Gradal just takes off, spreads his wings, and takes flight. Wait, no, owls don't make a sound. Um, woo! Uh, uh, what do you do as you watch but do not hear Gradal take flight? Um. Well, I guess I could roll like a perception check to see if I can find the route they took to get up the mesa. Um. So. So here, uh, I'm gonna give everyone. I'm gonna give all of you some options here. Okay. Uh, so perception is just a general looking for something. But it's just looking for something that would be, um, kind of out of place. Uh, if you want to be more specific about it, you can actually, uh, you can actually do survival. Survival's actual tracking in which you would actually look for specific things that would indicate them. If you just okay. did perception, you might not see anything if they're not doing anything obvious enough. Um, this is for everybody. You can do the perception, you can do survival, um, or you can do any other sort of skill check you'd like right now to contribute to uh, the effort. Okay, so I will roll survival then. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, I tried. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Oh no! Wait, hold on. I, I need to check. I need to fix something here on the stream because yeah, I okay. Yeah, there we go. No, that's good. So, Chinero. <laughs> okay. Huh. All right. Wait. Wait. No. No. I'm gonna do something better for you. Uh, I'm going to send you. Whoops. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send you a message on Discord, Chinera. Okay. Okay. For Dagmar, you're you're sort of looking around trying to find things, but you. But it, and and you decide to sort of try to track uh, Grad Doll as he flies away, but you sort of get lost. There are too many birds, 
in the sky. It's too confusing, uh-huh. and by too many birds, I mean like three. Um, so you're not quite sure which one is Gravel now. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna move the chat box here. I need to move this chat box a little bit because we're not getting all the things at the bottom. Okay, there we go. Uh, for a theory, you're investigating. Now, uh, a theory. Investigation is usually because you're analyzing something very, very specific. Is, is there something specific that you want to analyze? Because usually you have like a room that you're looking at or a, a piece of uh, area that you'd like to look at. Yeah, I was going to look for tracks in the dirt, kind of okay. grass that was kind of flattened down. Um... You, it's a little bit hard to t- tell. Um, you don't seem to find anything th- that. Um, you don't seem to find anything th- that sort of peculiar. Would actually be uh, actually would lead them to, would lead you to think that they were there specifically. You do find something. I'm gonna send you a message on Discord. Um, okay. Okay, then there you go. Uh, so after the three of you uh, sort of do your best to try to track them, uh, you can put your information together. So, uh, what information? Uh, what information do you share with each other? Um. So I'm seeing some tracks. They look like dinosaur tracks. They only have three toes. And I come back and I've got this giant feather like the size of my arm. Just one. Oh. I saw birds. <laughs> I saw birds. <laughs> I just saw birds. Three of them. I'm confused. <laughs> Is there a feathered dinosaur out here? You don't see any. I mean... Technically, all dinosaurs are birds. (laughs) It's supposed to have feathers. When you say that, Fred pipes up, yeah, the professor thinks that uh, dinosaurs... He thinks that dinosaurs evolved from birds. Where do you come from? Fred's been here the whole time. (laughs) We just choose to ignore him. He just is kind of falling around like a lost puppy dog. Okay, uh, okay. Obviously, you have forgotten Fred. I'm gonna have to put him on the screen here. Um, okay, let me let me find him. I just like, forget about him, and then somebody mentions Fred, and it's like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. With the, with those doe eyes, the only special ability Fred has is to charm person. Yes. Damn. So you know, as Fred t- t- talks about that, it's like, yeah, dinosaurs have a similar uh, bone structure to birds, so they must have evolved from them. As he pets his uh, pet chicken Gale. <laughs> I don't think you know how evolution works, Fred. <laughs> First, the chicken or <laughs> the dinosaur. Age. The shovel hob. They don't have to teach those guys everything. Uh, He's an archaeologist, not a not a biologist. <laughs> uh, oh, Fred. Um, have you seen anything that looks sort of like this before? Like. <laughs> You know, you, you've been around traveling with the professor and stuff. Do you know what kind of dinosaur this could be? If kind it of is wrinkles a dinosaur? his nose and <laughs> scratches his head. And he says, yeah, last time we were here, I did see some tracks like this. I'm guessing you're standing around the tracks right now. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't see anything. We heard, uh, we heard some strange sounds, though. Do you want me to try to uh, reproduce them? 
Yes. <laughs> yes, I would, Fred. <laughs> and he does the scariest voice. Uh huh. You keep looking at him. They keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's why we keep you around. <laughs> um, um, d did it sound like a pterodactyl, Fred? Um, what does a, ter what does a pterodactyl sound like? Pterodactyls were like. Ah! <laughs> As he's doing these sounds, he proceeds to sort of imitate the dinosaurs, right? So when you go, Arr! he kind of like hunches over and. Puts his hands... Now, now I'm going to be very, very specific about this, so that paleontologists don't get mad at me. <laughs> when he imitates a, uh, the, the... When he imitates the theropod dinosaur, he puts his, like, hands sort of together, and he tucks his elbows into his sides and his ribs. But he doesn't put his hands palm down, he puts them palms facing inward, and then fingertips pointed down slightly. Okay. Uh. Okay. I have a I have a very important question. Yes. How loud is he being right now? As we're at the base of this mesa that potentially has a trap on the top. <laughs> is he just screws over? <laughs> when you asked him to imitate these animals, he did his very best to imitate them as accurately as possible. So you have him running around you, <laughs> flapping his arms, going oh, no. <laughs> as loud as he can. Kill him! Kill him now! <laughs> I'm gonna roll for initiative! He's dead! <laughs> He's giving a fair position! <laughs> I'm sure it's fine, Dagmar. <laughs> <laughs> or he just called in a, <laughs> a creature who's going to come flying in. Yeah, oh shoot, he might be making like mating call noises without even realizing it. Well, then that's it. Fred's problem now, isn't it? <laughs> the sacrificial, sacrificial Fred. Fred, yes. That's why that's why we brought him with us. <laughs> but keep the chicken, we need the eggs. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll keep the chicken. I ironically, it sounds like you want this to be like the dinosaurs TV show where they had that that TV show inside the TV show about a scientist and a sidekick named Timmy and Timmy got blown up every single episode. Yes. <laughs> We're going to need a new friend. Yep. Fred's also reminding me of the old Nokia phone in Jurassic Park right now. <laughs> oh my God. I think Fred's name should be Nokia. <laughs> oh. So I assume this is all you're doing. Um. So in which case, uh, this is what Gradle's gonna come upon. Like Gradle's gonna fly back, you know, come back and see you <laughs> just like staring at Fred as he's making these sounds and running around. Okay. So. Well, face palming though. That's important. <laughs> no, I'm I'm laughing hysterically. <laughs> I'm okay. Face palming. Now, speaking of Gradal, Gradal, so you are zooming around the mesa. I am, uh, and I'm trying to keep my eye out for whatsoever I can. Okay. Um Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and roll perception. Okay, uh, I will say that as an owl, uh, I do have keen hearing and sight, which means I get advantage on perception checks that rely on hearing or sight. Yes, you do. So I'll roll twice. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> uh... 23 and a natural one. <laughs> I'll take the 23, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, I'm going to do something really quick. Hopefully I don't mess up. Technical difficulties have been here this time, but I think I have it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. Uh, I'm just going to try this uh, just because this might be 
it's not that important this time, but it might be helpful uh, for later. Uh, so I'm going to turn off my mic for the stream. Um, but if you guys, you, you all can keep uh, talking. So a Siri, Janair, Dagmar, you can keep talking. You can talk about Fred or whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I'm going to see if I can jump into a different Discord voice channel with uh, with Gradal here. Oh. Oh, boy. Let's see if we can do this one. Okay, so I'm going to the general uh, voice channel. Uh, I'm going to have to turn off my mic, though, uh, for the stream. So... I think they would still if you if you heard Gradal, I think you would still this the Twitch would catch Gradal's voice. Just uh, Gradal's voice. Yeah, so you guys would have to like Yeah, I don't know what you would have to do. Oh well that's why it's a good thing. So I'm gonna turn off my mic right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Might just like mute all of it for a moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Will do. Greetings and salutations. Okay. Uh, uh, Out, though <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to change this a little bit because it's still we're still using my desktop audio to uh stream out so i don't know if we could do one where you're all still talking uh it's fine like we enjoyed that <laughs> yeah like it, the the audience could hear what you guys were talking about and just you know are poking fun at us because we yeah. don't know what's happening. So <laughs> okay, and I unmuted for a second and I heard Michael say salutations and I was like, oh, I should probably mute this. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I think I think maybe that's what I'm gonna, gonna do is we're we're gonna do is I guess Michael and I will just leave the room and then the. The, the audience will be able to hear us talking and then you'll just be the ones left in the dark. Whoopsie daisy. 
Okay. Is, can right. everybody hear us again? I, th I think so. Okay. Yeah, let us know in chat if you can hear. Please do. So, um, Daryl, while I'm on my way back, do I notice any like small mice or rodents or anything that looks particularly tasty? Uh, with your good perception and your owl-like eyes, yes, with your owl eyes, yes, you do see uh, uh, a particularly delicious-looking field mouse. Ooh, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll grab it and have a little snack before heading back. Uh, do you do that you in front of them, or do you wait? Or just oh, on the way on the way on the way back. Okay, you okay. Want me to roll an attack or something, or no? We'll just assume that you, as an owl, can catch a mouse. <laughs> okay. okay. So <laughs> I'll 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 fly down in front of them, and I'll turn back into a gradol with the mouse still in my mouth, and just sort of like <laughs> spit it out and put it on the on the ground once I'm back, and said, "Well, they appear to be settling in for the night." Uh, we found our, our, our wayward friends. They seem to be settling in for the night at uh, just over that area, and I point up to sort of where the uh, the, the crevice is. Okay. They, they seem to be settling up in that area. Um, we, we could go up, and uh, I could use uh, my second second level spell to do Pass Without a Trace, and we could surprise them, but we don't know if the wizard has laid out any surprises for us either. Yeah. Just one point of order. I want to ask you, Gradel. Now, you ate the mouse, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, just, you can just imagine Gretel reappearing and the field mouse tail going like a piece of spaghetti. Into okay, his mouth. okay. I, I just want to make sure because as an owl, remember, owls eat their prey whole and then regurgitate them the uh, undigested hair and bones as pellets. So I want to be accurate here. Oh, I did not know that. You've never, you, you oh. didn't, you've never like. You didn't had to dissect a p owl pellet. I have Something never had to dissect an owl pellet. I oh. I am old enough that I used to dissect frogs. Uh, Back before they stopped doing it in high school, so it shows you how old I am. They do have some zooarchaeology classes now with the owl pellets. Oh, that's cool. In time of COVID, the the professor here at uh, Central he uh, sends owl pellets to students' houses, and I have to package it for students. <laughs> <laughs> They're really weird like looking, aren't they? Job. <laughs> huh? They're really weird looking, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> They make they make wonderful presents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just remember I, I found oh go go for it. Huh? Oh no no no. Okay. I just remember finding one I, I think I had dissected one before, but I happened to find one on the roof of my house one time. And it really bugged me because I didn't know what it was. It was like it looked like kind of bluish and or like kind of gray bluish and like plasticky. And it took me a while to realize like, oh that's an owl pellet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right then. So, <laughs> all right then. So, a theory, Genera Dagmore, you have now seen Gradol slurp down a uh, a field mouse, which reminds me of a family story, a family urban legend, um, Chileriano con Claco. I'll tell it later if you'd like. No. Uh, was that a no? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> is, that, is, is that sort of like? Isn't that is that kind of like uh, a a version of the uh, the KFC urban legend? Um, the Kentucky fried the Kentucky fried rat urban legend. I think it, you know what I think about it. I think it is, but it's not KFC though. Um, I. Like the way my mother tells it, it was like supposed to be like a friend of the family or something like that, or like my great aunt or something like that. Like so, but yeah, it's it's very urban legendy. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just wondering because I I, t I teach myth and culture and folklore on occasion, and we we cover 
the Kentucky Fried Rat and a number of other different urban legends in class. Mm. So, uh, I'll tell it like at the end of the stream. Yay. Okay. Yeah, please do. <laughs> so, uh, Genera, uh, uh, Theory, uh, Dagmar, you now see Gradal slurp down this field mouse with a bit of relish, um, and explain that. So, uh, let me look at the map. So, if you look closely at the, I'm going to just delete some of the stuff here. So, if you look at the map right there, there's a dark spot. What happens is there's kind of a, uh, kind of like a ravine, kind of a cleft, like a large cleft into the mesa. So, it makes a kind of canyon. And hopefully I actually did that on the painting. Let me see if I did. Uh, yeah, so if you notice on the right-hand side, there's a bit of a, a darker spot in there. Um, it, 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 the mesa is fairly tall. And uh, the way Gradle explains it, they're only maybe halfway up the mesa. But in there, as you go into it, there is uh, not quite an entrance, but sort of you know a parting, a cleft. Uh, in the mesa, and you can see that's actually what the so that part there, and that's kind of what this is. It seems like this sort of part of the mesa that's sort of broken up. So that is a depression at the top. Yeah, it, it is a depression at the top. Kind of, it kind of looks like part of the mesa sort of collapsed a little bit. It, is it just me, or does this picture of the mesa kind of look like uh, a face? Like it's sleeping face, and there's like the dark part is like a tear running down one of the eyes. You kind of look like that. <laughs> Does anybody else see I that? <laughs> like, I'm trying this, to find the left eye though. Like this, this is like an eye. Mm -hmm. This is like the other eye. This oh. is the nose. Oh, this is the yeah. Mouth. And then there's a tear going down the eye this way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I gotta try. I gotta delete that, these now, but. Oh. Why isn't it let me delete them? There we go. Why won't it let me delete the mouse? I can do it. I got it. I am another off-topic thing, but right off, ever yeah. <laughs> draw chalk on the petroglyphs? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> okay. So, what is your plan? All grouped in. We can definitely sneak up on them. I could use Pass Without a Trace, but I'd burn my other second level spell. Um, we could sneak up on them, but the question is, do we want to try new to negotiate again? I mean, they're obviously looters, but do they know that what they're looting is cursed items? Well, someone else will have to try that this time, <laughs> other than me. So, I, I, I guess my question is: is are are we, are we going up to them? And if we are, are we negotiating or are we fighting? Yeah, I could charm them. <laughs> Why is it quiet? I could charm them. <laughs> <laughs> they're all just standing there just kind of all like oh yeah yeah sure sure Dagmar yeah. that's so weird <laughs> <laughs> well, um Daryl also too um, if you don't mind could you draw how like the path that they're taking to get up the mesa I'm, I'm just kind of curious uh are they climbing? Are they like rock climbing the the face of it, or? Um. 
So I guess this is where my painting needs to be a little bit more clear. So you you can only straight shot it toward the mesa to a certain point here. And then at a certain point, you're going to have to sort of tack it. Okay, and so tacking it up, it's it really should be kind of in like there maybe. Um, so you would have to hug the, uh, the side of the mountain fairly closely. Um, yeah. Okay. So we can just like call out to them from, from the base even. I mean, you could. I don't know what kind of response you'd be able to get. It's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of. A... I'll assume that it works, but as we imagine in our minds, it's gonna be very, very echoey. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Are you looting, 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 looting? <laughs> looting? I, I mean, it 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 makes sense for us to 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 go up and and. Surprise them while they're they're resting. I think no matter what. But the I, the one question is whether we negotiate or we're, whether we fight. Well, I th think we should avoid fighting for as long as possible. It, like if it's not a necessary thing that we have to do with these people. So like if we can negotiate with them, great, and not resort to violence. I agree. I mean, looking at these people, they don't look particularly criminalish. They're not like the the bandits that we saw before. They're it look just looks like they're trying to survive. And mm -hmm. and if, if I can step out into my archaeologist room, this fits with the the pattern. You know, in the United States, you get a lot of pot hunters, but. In most countries, especially impoverished countries worldwide, if you go to like the Middle East and stuff like that, you have what's called subsistence looting. People who live mm -hmm. in people who live in war zones or, or people who live in economically depressed areas, you know, often loot archaeological objects to survive. And the true causes of the looting are the collectors who drive the demand for the objects. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, as well as like the smugglers and the antiquities dealers who who launder them. Yeah. Oh, there was a great. I I I. We have so many tangents in this game tonight, but I just have to mention it as a local, as a, as a local Massachusetts guy. There is a great netflix documentary series on the gardner museum robbery okay um yeah that my wife and i saw and it's fantastic cool we'll have to check that out completely off topic but <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm putting up these pictures just to guilt you some more the people yeah. whose, whose lives you're hoping to murder. Uh, hey, now. Nobody said anything about murder. <laughs> that was your attitude the last game, though. <laughs> I murdered a character named Murder. I'll never get over that. <sighs> well, I, I, I think there's a difference between people who are, act, you know, bandits who are actively trying to rob and harm people versus people who are looting objects to survive. I mean, yeah. the, people I real, I, the people I really blame are the people like the shopkeeper back in Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are the people I really blame for this. Yeah. This took a really heavy turn. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's why, you know, a lot of ecotourism is trying to get, uh, you know, have local people be able to make money off of preserving sites and mm -hmm. providing tours, you know, finding yeah. other yeah. ways to, you know, that to make a living without looting. Mm -hmm. Well, m more than, more than that, it, it, again, it took a serious turn, but, it, but more than that, you know, we have to remember as, you know, if we're archeologists, you know, all of us are archeologists who work in the United States, but remember my mm -hmm. specialty was the near East. 
mm-hmm. we in the Near East, we're colonizers, just right. as much as we are in the uh, in the U.S. And so we have to remember that when we're in the Middle East, the people we're, that we're working with and the people who are doing the looting, it's their heritage that they're looting, right, mm-hmm. and not ours. So. Anyway, serious turn. Yeah, I can see you in demo mode. Yay! So are we going to negotiate or are we going to slaughter? <laughs> let's, con- let's, convince the- let's convince them to start a tourist company <laughs> to preserve the Mesa <laughs> and make money off of tourism instead. <laughs> I-, I mean, like looking at the illustrations, they do look adorable. I'm sorry. <laughs> they are, they are. <laughs> so I still don't know oh. what you're all going to do when you finally meet up with them. Well, they 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 outnumber us. And one of them is one of those magic types. Yeah. None of them are smiling except maybe the uh the one with the the yeah, rabbit ears. So, could that be ringleader? No. The uh, <laughs> when I was up there, I, I I saw the ringleader. The ringleader is the one with the uh, crossbow at her side, with the the goblin with the dour face and the shield. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Huh. He was giving orders to the others. There still could be a trap up there. We should try to call out to them and maybe not have a theory do it. No. <laughs> yeah. I'll just hide in the shadows on this one. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh what's what's Fred's stats? Fred is Oh yeah, we we could set in Fred. He's yeah, how, what's looking. What's his charisma like? Fred, what's your charisma like? <laughs> you, you like charisma? Well, uh, I'm not very good with the ladies. Oh. <laughs> we can always send in the chicken. <laughs> Worst case scenario, if it sets off any traps, we uh, we just enjoy some fried chicken later. Or we could give up and the I, chicken as I, like an olive branch. I, I get, I get, I give Fred a wink to know that I'm kidding the entire time. <laughs> You can see Fred sort of recoil in horror, like and like clutching Gale's cage, you know, quite tightly. But, but I let him know that I'm joking, <laughs> and I'm not serious. Okay, I'm gonna roll an intelligence check to see if he understands you. Okay. <laughs> he does. Okay, but he gives he gives you kind of a sour look, saying he doesn't appreciate that kind of humor. <laughs> All right then. Um, so again, let's go ahead and put your so you go ahead and put your uh, plan into action, I suppose, which is to yell up the mountain and hopefully, or what? Well, we haven't really decided yet what we're going to do. I mean, yeah. I can definitely sneak us up there. I can do pass without a trace. The question is, is is that what we want to do? Do we want to yell up the mountain? Do we want to sneak up and? Surprise them and try to get them to talk again. Or are we going in um, crossbows of Belizean? Well, I wonder if if sneaking isn't necessarily the right way to go, because I feel like if we do pass without a trace and make our way up there, I think that may make them more concerned about our intentions. Whereas if maybe if we just walk up there and, you know, kind of approach, like, you know, hands up, hey, you know, we just want to talk to you guys type of thing, like, not here to hurt you or anything. Yep. Hold on. Sorry, folks. Very, very, very important interruption. Okay, cool. Good night, buddy. Good night. Oh, give me hugs. (laughs) 
could definitely do that if you want to. I'm cool with whatever the group wants to do. And I mean, it, if there's traps, we can always just have, you know, Fred walk in front of us. Yes. Yes to that, yes. Fred is not technically wearing a shirt. It's a vest, and it is not red. <laughs> it's not red. <laughs> it is tan, uh, like a good archaeologist. I, I, I just understood the Star Trek reference. Yeah, I just got it. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, another, another option. We know which one of them is uh the leader if we sneak up there i could attempt a charm person spell and if we charm the leader then the other ones might fall in line yeah that's sounds like a good plan too yeah all right the question is is what i the thing is i wouldn't be able to do it surreptitiously there's verbal and somatic components um, let me, uh, you're a charm person spell? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look it up real quick. Keep talking. I'll, I'll look up the uh, exact uh, way it works. <laughs> you know, keep, keep scheming. Keep planning. So, um, Dagmar probably should be in the back. Okay. Um, I think a theory should be behind me, considering yes. I didn't screw up yet. <laughs> yeah. You already don't trust me. True. Um, That's very approachable. <laughs> Fred and Gail won't intimidate anybody. <laughs> hey, that's true. Sure, yeah. Yeah, unless he starts thinking that he needs to perform a dino mating call or something. Which, I mean, fine. They'll just stare at him like he's an idiot, like we did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to get him doing that now. <laughs> uh... mm. Yeah, but Gretel's more charismatic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Why, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, Aww, has Gretel I'm offered a flower yet? Yeah. He hasn't had a chance to talk to them. Not really. I don't even know if they've seen the rest of us. They may have just seen a theory. Yeah, I, I think that's the case. I don't know if they've seen us or whether they've seen just figures following them. Yeah, that's a good point. We need to, we need to roll for a uh, flower placement. Oh, I think I did learn out the art with my friends. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so then they don't know how much of us. Oh, oh no! <laughs> That's my second now one tonight. Oh. <laughs> well, get them out. Not... <laughs> get them out now. So. <laughs> We're going to kill flower. these poor people on accident. <laughs> Do we know anything more about them other than who the ringleader is? Not that I could discern. I could have uh, I could have flown in close, but I didn't want them to get suspicious. Hmm. Cuz some of them have trowels and shovels and some of them I just wonder, I, I wonder, you know, what makes up this particular group? Hmm. Well, if one of them is a wizard, one of them may be identifying some of the objects that they find. Which if they identify, if the wizard identifies them and knows that they're cursed when they're passing them on, then that's a whole nother ball of wax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's the hobgoblin that has the shovel and the sword. And the mom tattoo. And the yes, and apparently <laughs> loves their mom very much, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> the boss just looks mean. 
The hunter looks amused and would make one hell of a bodyguard. Uh, she's and... missing a finger, if you notice. So maybe not that huh? good of a bodyguard. What was that? She's missing, missing a, a finger. finger. She's missing a finger? Yeah. Look at her pinky, yeah. it's gone. Oh, shoot, oh my god! And I wouldn't be surprised if one of them is a ranger or a druid, because one of them has what appears to be a pet ferret or weasel. Mm-hmm. And and I I have to ask, Daryl. <laughs> yes. Is that a crimson weasel or just a regular ferret or weasel? Oh, honestly, oh, I'm gonna fail you. I I just looked up ferret real quick <laughs> and I, I sketched it. Um, a lot of these sketches. Okay, so um, you're not supposed to show your hand, but whatever. Um, a lot of these sketches I I have to pump out really quick. So I'm just like, I need a ferret. Looked at it real quick and I pumped out the drawing in like an hour. No, I, I was just curious because um. One of my favorite characters on Critical Role has a crimson weasel that she carries exactly like this. <laughs> okay. So, so, did we decide that we're going to try to sneak up there and then have Gradol? Charm the leader. I'm happy with whatever. Yeah, whatever I think anybody that decides. Gradle and Fred tag team, yeah. but more more Gradle than Fred, obviously, since we don't trust Fred. <laughs> do we want to just walk up, or do you want me to do pass without a trace? I think just walk up, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. To be oh. fair, even with pass without a trace. We have a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we barely made it past that last set of of ticks because of of Gale. <laughs> uh... Yeah, save that spell. <laughs> okay, so I'll definitely save the spell, and we can head up. And so you want Fred and I to be in front? Yeah, I think I think. Uh... You guys have friendlier faces, and since most of the group are goblins, it might seem, I don't know, mm -hmm. less threatening. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm just scrolling into the sketches right now, and I'm really appreciating the different hairstyles. I didn't notice that before. These are, they're just so different and really cool. You're so good, Daryl. You are mm -hmm. so well, freaking so, so good. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I mean, I did that specifically because I, I, I didn't want you guys to like kill them that quickly. So I'm like, oh no, how, how can I like stay their hand? Um, oh, but then it turned really heavy because you're like, oh no. Oh. <laughs> Why did you roll initiative? <laughs> Are you jumping the gun there again? <laughs> Don't count that. Don't count it. Because it's so low? <laughs> oh, man. So I, I think that the the plan is is that we're heading up the mountain as normal, and then I'm going to... We're going to attempt to talk to the leader, and if that doesn't work, I can attempt to charm the leader, and if that doesn't work, then last resort, we decide to fight. Yes. That's That's doable. Okay, so as you walk up the mountain, uh, darkness does fall. So you are going to come up upon them uh, in the dark. Uh, you all do have night vision, so so it's not that big of a deal. Let's see here. Let me see here. All right. Trying to think. Okay, because I'm trying to set up something here for you right now. Uh, are you quiet? Are you talking? Are you asking uh, Fred to do those sounds again? Mm, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't. 
or, you know, alert anything else to our presence. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you tell him to be as quiet as possible. Yeah, just, shh, Fred. Shh. <laughs> All right. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm almost ready. Uh... All right, here we go. So you come up from the south southern part of that, okay. So everybody can see that map, right? Yeah. Uh so what you see is you see uh the human here and you see three of the goblins uh down here and there's another goblin out over there somewhere and uh, you see the hobgoblin up on the ledge uh, over there. Uh, so go ahead and put your, your icons, your little tokens at the bottom if you'd like. And I'm going to roll for the perception of the hobgoblin. He's being a bit of a scout here. Let's see if he notices you coming. Fifteen. Um, you're not trying to be stealthy, so he does notice you as you come up. Dagmar, you can't fly. <laughs> Get down. Right. How far down are we going? Oh, geez, that's way too. Uh, about run, run where everybody is. Yeah. Okay. And then Fred, Fred and I are up front. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me let me actually get Fred uh, over here. Let me see. Do I have? Where did I put Fred? Ah, yes. There's Fred. And then I'm also gonna take uh, Gail. I don't know. Can I see Gail on the? Yes. All right. I can. Let's see. Let me actually zoom in slightly here. Okay. Uh, I think you. I think the the stream can see Gail right there on the on the lower left. All right, so uh, the hobgoblin does notice you. He, he does notice you as you're, you're coming up the ma up the uh, up sort of the pathway. Do um, you notice him? Well, as soon as he sees you, he he like calls out. So it's he makes it kind of obvious um, that he's there and that everybody knows that you're approaching. Um. So. This is a little bit of a chronological fuzzy, but any of you can make a skill check right now to sort of help you with the situation. So you guys can do an investigation check to see if you can identify uh, what they're doing or who they are. Um, sort of like when you like look at a stranger and you look at what they're wearing, kind of like a Sherlock Holmes thing. Uh, you can do survival. Actually, that, that was actually another... No, no, I, I'm going to assume that uh, Grad was able to, to follow the path up with the Owl, so you more or less got up here. Um, but you can, if you want to do survival, you can do survival to make sure that you got up here quickly and not, like, six hours into the night. Um, you could also do perception to see if there's anything else uh, to see, or you can even do investigation. You can do investigation to actually look for traps, to see if they uh, set any traps. Um... God. <laughs> oh. Apologies if somebody else already asked this, but is Gail supposed to be out on on its own like that? Uh, do you want Gail to be out on, on her own? No, no, I don't want Gail to be out on her own. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm gonna put Gail right there, right next to uh, Fred. There. I, I was just about to hit animal handling because that didn't seem like a good situation. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Janera, what are you looking for specifically? Uh, just seeing if they have anything 
uh, set up as like a trap if possible. Stuff that could potentially hurt us, maybe. Uh. Okay. Okay, a theory. Uh, what were you looking for or looking at? The same thing. I was just doing an investigation to kind of look for traps and scout out the room or the the layout of see what they're doing. But I failed. Ooh, Dagmar. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, okay. All right. Okay, so I mentioned everybody on Discord, their information. Um, so go ahead, Grad. I'll take the lead. Uh, the Hobgoblin uh, yells out that you're coming and then makes his way down the rocks and begins to head toward the rest of the group. Hey. I'll just, I'll call out uh, in common and then again in goblin. Hello, everybody. Come in peace. Coming in peace. So, Nothing to be worried about here. Do you want me? Do you want me to cut? You know, do you want me to come over on my own, or what would you like? What would you like me to do? <laughs> so okay, you so... feel safe with me here. So the red one, uh, hopefully you can see that. The one with the red mm -hmm. dot steps forward. That's the one uh, that I was mentioning that would be the leader. Oh, let me get her picture. Just so you... Okay. There you go. That's the leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and she speaks to you in a gruff voice, like, oh, wait, what do you want? Like, th that's close enough. What do you want? Okay. Um, well, cards on the table. We just want to uh, talk with you and tell you why we're here and what we're looking to do. And we would hope you that you would extend us the same courtesy. Mm. Like, what we're doing... Uh, okay, well, you first. Since you're the one that wants to know, I'll explain, like, what it is you're doing here. Okay. We're from the city of Clark. Have you ever been? Yeah. She remains silent and he just sort of nods. Mm -hmm. It's lovely this time of year. The donuts in Goblet Town are... So good. We just had a big festival with fried dough and meats and okay. drink and all. Oh, it's just so much fun. Anywho, um, we were sent here uh, from Clark because uh, some artifacts that were taken from this mesa ended up going to Oak Ridge and then down to Clark. And uh, some of those artifacts were uh, cursed and endangered some of our citizens as a result. So uh, we're here to uh, figure out where these cursed artifacts are coming from and either stop them from being looted or uncurse them uh, so that our citizens will no longer be in danger. And that's pretty much it. So, she like looks at you rather sternly. Um, and can I can I do an insight check and because I'm 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 just completely laying out the truth for her. Can I do an insight check to see if she believes me? Uh 
I don't know if we can do an insight check to for specifically a, a specific of a feeling of that, I but go ahead and roll gen, insight, and I'll, you'll give a basic yeah. attitude of what she feels about towards you. Ooh, that's my third natural. Uh, <laughs> oh. She doesn't like you. That's about it. Oh, she doesn't seem to like anything. <laughs> okay. She she turns slightly. Eyes are still on you, but her head con she turns a little bit back a little bit, but she's still sort of focused on you, and she begins to sort of do something with her hands. Um, she makes some sort of gesture. Can um, I? Can I see with my perception to see what it is, or can I roll another insight? No, no, you, you're not. You're not out? hiding it. Um, but she's. Yeah. You can see her sort of like. Doing something strange with her hands. It's it's she's sort of right. like flapping the, her palms and like forming her fingers into little shapes. Um, can I, can I do an can I do another insight check to see if it's a spell or something? Or that wouldn't be insight. That would be Arcana. That'd be Arcana. I can do that. Okay. Um, as she does that, the other goblins, the the two goblins that you see in the human, also begin to sort of do. They begin to like look at her and look at each other and start to do. S Similar sort of symbols and, and gestures with their hands. Seventeen on Arcana. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna message you on Discord. I can't believe I rolled my third natural for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dice came from a eluded tomb that was cursed. <laughs> <laughs> They're archaeological. <laughs> okay. All right. Understood. So, uh, so I've I've told you why we're here and what we're looking to do. Uh, would you mind returning the uh, favor? We're just like... So we just have a couple of questions about your story. Sure. Because it seems a little strange. Like, why would you care? Were you sent by the mayor of Clark? Like, who sent you here? What authority do you have to investigate this? That's a good question. DM, if I recall, we weren't actually sent by anybody. We just, we essentially had our friend Ami, who was affected by the curse, and we traced the object that she had looted back to the store, traced the store to uh, Hair Dr. Pickle, and traced Hair Dr. Pickle to the Mesa. <laughs> is that so, correct? Yeah, that's that's I, I don't about call it. I'm hair doctor pickle because that's what we came up with. I'm yeah. I'm not going to try to pronounce Doctor Zukunikaba. Professor, yes, yes. Um. So I mean, like, what do you what do you tell her? What do you tell them? Uh, I. I tell her I tell her the complete and total truth. At this point they're so spooked that nothing but the, the truth will do. Okay. I'll say a friend a friend of ours was cursed by the item. We tracked the item down to uh a shopkeep in Oak Ridge. We tra traced the shopkeep to uh an archaeological dig in uh north of Oak Ridge and we traced uh the cursed objects that the uh folks from the archaeological dig had to this mesa again we're just we're just trying to keep our friends and and other people in our community from being cursed we goblins in clark have it we goblins in clark and well frankly elsewhere have enough to deal with between the refugee crisis and everything else going on we don't need to to be uh having cursed objects you know uh 
there were three goblins actually that were uh that were uh affected by this cursed object and only one of them survived the other two were are dead because of this uh because of this particular cursed object and then the, that's as far as Gretel knows that's correct right because we know that Ami was traveling with the cursed object and the other two goblins she was traveling with are d-e-a-d dead so that is the truth as far as i know it right right okay. daryl yes as far as you know yeah um so you explain yourself, and she again looks at the uh, looks at the other ones, and specifically the two goblins. the The two goblins kind of do the the hand gestures again, and then kind of shrug. Um, but one of them in particular, one of them in particular, uh, ah, let me. See. See. Yeah, one of them. So let me see. So the other one that would be there would be this one here. Let's see, so this is. I'll make them a little bigger so you can see the the crowd overall. Trying to negotiate how to put everything out. Okay. So the leader looks at the other two. Uh maybe a little bit bigger for this one. And the one with the tall bit of hair that sort of stands up in a spiral. Uh he nods. He kind of like nods at him. Um and so the the leader uh, the leader nods back and then looks like looks at you and it's like okay. L the the leader seems to believe you. He's like okay, you seem to be telling the truth. All right, and well, my mom always said that honesty is the best policy. <laughs> the the leader kind of smirks at that a little. Like, huh. Ha! I'm going to have to make a voice for this one, for this person. Um, it's like, okay, you seem to be telling the truth. Still, we, we don't know anything about cursed artifacts. We're up here, but we've never seen or dealt with any cursed objects ourselves. Uh, well, you might not necessarily know that they are uh, are cursed, as the curse seems to pass off to whoever the uh, owner of the object is. And again, this is also, as far as I know, the truth, because Ami was cursed, then I was cursed when I picked up the object, and then I was basically shoved it back into the hands of the shopkeeper. And hopefully that shopkeeper's who... cursed now. And hopefully that shopkeeper <laughs> is cursed, because you don't deal in looted antiquities. <laughs> what do you guys know about that there cave behind you? Well, uh, there, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, can they? I'm sorry, I had roll twenty up and not Discord. Who said that? Oh, that was me. Hold on, I gotta go back to the. I gotta go back to the, who said it. Dagmar. A uh, Dagmar. Okay. <laughs> and I said, you know, that is a good a good point. I've I've told you why we're here. We I've been completely honest with you, and you believe me, which is that is a good head start in our relationship. <laughs> so I was wondering if you might be able to grant us the same courtesy and just let us know uh, what you hear and what you're planning to do and. See if we can either work together or uh, find one way, uh, some way to uh, help each other in our respective missions. Okay, so the the leader begins to explain that they they've come to uh, to this mountain. Uh, 
for a bit of exploration. Uh, the thing is, if you if you look on the map, there are no there are no. Well, actually, no. I'll take that back. Let me see. Let me let me do the expanded map. All right. Boop, 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 boop. Zoom out slightly so that everybody can see. Okay. And let me get rid of these pictures. So just so you can see all this. Okay. So. What they explain is, is that at least in this Mesa, um, uh, there aren't really a lot of settlements that are nearby. So on the map, you know of a, a larger settlement here, a teeny tiny one there. And if you go down south, there's Oak Ridge. There's another one here on the lake. Um, there is another settlement here, but that's not associated with humans and hobgoblins in general. That would be sort of the uh, the just goblins, but but not like the goblins from Goblin Town, like a separate group. But they are also not associated with the the warlord. It's a sort of semi uh, semi permanent uh, settlement uh, of just goblins. Um, this would be just sort of general knowledge that you know of, and that that. Upper, so you can see how the terrain changes once you get past that river, that it becomes uh, much browner, so it's much drier. So that river sort of marks the northern border of what would be sort of quote unquote civilized uh, territory. Um, the mesa here is largely unused and unexplored. So the leader explains they're here to explore the mesa, they just to see what's here. And possibly set up defenses or some sort of uh, fortress or something um, to possibly protect against attacks uh, from the warlord Kulog, or you know some sort of escape route uh, or somewhere where people could be safe. And this is from which of the they're from which of the settlements? Uh, so. The the uh, the leader the leader explains that she that she's not from nearby, but that she has fought um, in some of the battles up north, um, which would sort of explain kind of her her battle scars and why she has a very dour look on her face. Um, mm. she's very but concerned against the, against yes. the warlord. Yes. Hmm. Can uh, I do an? Can I do an insight check to see if I believe her? Okay, everybody, roll insight. Okay, no natural okay. ones. <laughs> no natural ones, please. Oh, better. Uh, what about Genera? Are you gonna try to insight? There we go. Oh, nice, oh, Genera. Oh, okay. Two dirty twenties. Oh. oh, okay, so. A theory is a little bit on the on the lower end, but we'll just assume a theory gets the gist of it. So a theory, you understand the gist of what I'm about to say, but play just a little bit on the dumber side of things. Okay. Uh, so she is lying. Um, but the thing is, though, there's like there's a kind of half truth. There's there's a weird sort of half truth in it. It's not it's not a bald faced lie. She's not completely making things up. There there is some sort of truth in her lie. Um. But you're not quite sure what part of it is. But a lot of it's a lie. Now, I thought we were going to be honest with each other. Right? Now, let's start again. My name's Gredal, and everything I just told you is the truth. Your name is... And then you can continue on, and this time... Tell us the whole truth of everything that you're doing here. Getting flashbacks to that shop. <laughs> <In Oak Ridge. laughs> okay. Um, 
Let me hold on a second. I'm trying to make sure I got something ready here. Okay. All right. Um, checking something here. Checking, 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 checking. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to... Right, I need to write down a note here real quick. Um, I forgot to write something down. Okay. So, she looks very irritated at you. Um, she... She kind of, you can tell she's sort of like biting her tongue and kind of is quickly losing patience with you. Um, well, losing patience with me? I'm not the one who was fibbing. She she introduces herself again, or, or introduces herself for, for real. Um, she calls herself Moo. Moo. Pleased to meet yeah. you, Moo. She like nods toward you. Okay. Um. And she explains that in the uh, battles of the north, that she worked as a she she was actually a captain. Um, but the battling sort of took too much out of her, and she she retired. Um, and the, but that has left a mark on her. And then uh, she introduces uh, the two behind her. So I guess we're, let's go back. Uh, so the the two goblins that are behind her, she introduces. Um, so the the two where, where where is it? So the two gums behind her, the so so the one with the ferret, um, the the one with the ferret, his uh, his name is Tic Tac, and then the uh, the one with the the sort of handkerchief shawl, uh, we're gonna call her, um, trying trying to remember what I what I decided on. It doesn't matter. I can't handle the cuteness. <laughs> uh, what was it? I'm too tired. I'm too tired for verisimilitude. I'm just gonna. Call <laughs> okay, she's just she's just Ethel. She's just gonna be Ethel. Ethel. Which one is? Uh, so the the one with the tall hair that uh, the one with the tall hair, uh, he's Tic Tac. Tic Tac, right? And then Ethel is the oh, okay. Ethel is that one right there to the right. Yeah. Um. I, I was trying to remember the name of the uh, the matchmaker from uh, Fiddler on the Roof, but I couldn't remember it. Oh, Yenta, Yenta, that's what it is. We're, we're gonna stick with Ethel. Oh, uh, but Yen, no, we're not gonna call her Yenta. We'll stick with Ethel. All right, there you have it. Then we have Ethel, Tic Tac, and Moo. Okay, um, then Moo begins to continue to explain that they, they um, Tic Tac and Ethel are actually also citizens, uh, are also also citizens of a uh, Clark, and they they were hoping to assist in this, uh, in sort of making the safe uh, city safe for them as well, um, and they all not. You can roll. Any of you? Okay, so then, um, if you want, oh, you really? can continue to roll insight again. Well, you you already know that this is probably a lie from your insight because you all checked uh, checked her. If you want, you can roll insight again, but you can look at the other goblins or the hobgoblin or or the human. Um, and you're gonna have to tell me who you're looking at. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to look at the other two goblins, Tic Tac and Ethel. Nice. And I'll I'll look at the uh, the hobgoblin. Okay. I will look at the human. 
Yeah, but I didn't look hard. <laughs> I'm looking at the human also. Okay. My humanness helped out. <laughs> <laughs> My half human. <laughs> okay, so Dagmar, you don't notice much anything about the human. Grada, you don't notice much either. And then a theory. Let's see, a theory. You're looking at the human, a theory? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're all speaking common. All, all of them are speaking common. And they, even if you speak to them in Goblin, they always re respond in common. Okay. So, uh, Moo continues to, to explain and kind of... So she's adding a little bit of detail to her story. Um, and she explains that the cave behind them seemed like it would be a good spot uh, to explore and possibly be a, a safe hiding spot. But she basically just ignores your accusation of it being a lie. Um... From your from your insight tech, we're just going to keep apply that again. She continues to be lying, but you're kind of not sure. It's kind of a weird, like half truth, half lie. Um. Uh, yeah. So you may respond. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let Gradal know that. Tic Tac and Ethel um, appear to be not lying, I guess. Like, they're really from Clark. Mm. So, um, so your, uh, your friends Tic Tac and Ethel really are from Clark, huh? Um, when did, uh, when did you leave Clark? Because, Frankly, you know, you may have heard of us. We were the uh, we were the uh, party that uh, killed the uh, the bar guest at the Bone Munchers Guild. And I want to, while I'm saying this, I want to look very, very closely at Ethel and Tic Tac and sort of gauge their reaction. Um. So Ethel and Tic Tac also respond and like, yeah, we heard about a group of people who who killed the monster, but. Uh, and we did see the body, but uh, we're kind of worried because they sh like when the bar guest showed up, they showed up, and then when when Ami was kidnapped and the other goblins got hurt, they also showed up again. So we're kind of worried that wherever they are, there seems to be trouble there. Well, very astute. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, because if if you have a group that goes looking to solve problems where there's trouble and seeks out trouble to try to solve the problem, then yeah, there's going to be correlation is not causation, folks. <laughs> <laughs> they, they hide. They begin to hide behind the human because um, they're a little bit nervous. Okay. God, I can't. Correlation is not causation. I cannot hide my archaeologist, no matter how hard. <laughs> I, I was, I, I, no. If you didn't say it, I would have said it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Remember, I'm just a nerdy. I just don't have to have an ar a degree in archaeology. No, 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 no. You don't need one. No, you don't need one. No. You don't need one. Trust me. <laughs> it's not worth the student love, loans. I just love how you stopped yourself mid conversation to say that. Just like. Like, wait a second, correlation is not causation, folks. Come on. <laughs> uh. So I mentioned to the group, like, I see the 
goblins go hide behind the human, and I notice that the human seems kind of, um, kind of odd and not like really part of this group. I don't know. There's something hmm. aloof or detached about um, the human's reaction. I'm wondering so, what she's doing here. <laughs> so, um, may I, may I also ask your name? Unless, uh, you know, a theory, unless you want to, since you were the one who had the insight against the human, if you want to pipe up and be the one to to inquire about the uh, the the human individual, you can you can go ahead and do that. I don't want to be the only sure. one talking yeah so i say in common to the human what's what's your name uh are you clark um, also yeah. i need i need to look up something real quick okay yeah so you you ask that of the human yeah <laughs> uh moo sort of steps in and says her name is cassandra Um, is Cassandra mute that she can't talk for herself? Um, I, I'm I'm writing a lot of notes here. Is that Cassandra with a K or a C? It's a C. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dagmar's not the scribe. <laughs> oh, I'm I, a D&D journal. Anna, Anna, I've seen your notebook. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely I have, gorgeous. I have and to tell you, page, the web oh, page is awesome too. Oh, yes, you. you're doing such a great job. And I have to tell you, after <laughs> seeing your journal, I'm like, oh my god, that's a really great idea. So I <laughs> went and got myself one, and I have been writing oh, and god. doodling in it <laughs> too. So you gotta post it's, that stuff on Twitter or at least I in mean, Discord so you can see it's it. It's nowhere near as good as your stuff. Oh, no, no, stop. I can't draw with crap, so. <laughs> Unless it's an artifact. I can do an artifact, but I can't yeah, do I know. anything else. <laughs> I, I, can do, I can do pottery drawings, but that's about it. Yeah. Lithics. <laughs> Lithics only for me, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, um, Genera, <laughs> say that line again. Say that line again. What did you say? Uh, I said, is Cassandra mute that she can't talk for herself? She looks at you. She gives you kind of a dirty look and then does something with her hands. Again, she's doing the gestures again. Like, she's flapping her hands and kind of moving her arms and, like, doing oh, things with her fingers. Oh, God. It's ASL. Ah. Uh... Oh, okay. ASL? American? Silent? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be... It would be since since the theory is the one who noticed it, it would be a theory sign language. <laughs> theory new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or uh I so I, I sort I sort of go, ah, I see. I apologize if my friend uh caused offense. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I uh, you know. <laughs> That's all. It's okay. We all occasionally, uh, we all occasionally mistakenly offend others, and you know when we do, we apologize. So I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly sorry. Okay. She like so. nods at you, um, and then Mu actually seems to look a little bit relieved. Uh, so, so Mu is like, "Look, it's dark. We're tired. Can we at least sleep on this? Uh, I mean, we're." We're still not exactly sure what you want. You wanted us to. Well, we we just wanted to 
be truthful with one another. We're both on the Mesa at the same time. Your goal seems a worthy one to develop a fortification against this warlord. Ours also seems to be a worthy one. So we would just like to sit and chat. I could cook a meal for you. Fred pipes up. Bed. I could cook uh, oatmeal and sardines. No. He's still here. <laughs> He's like, standing right next to Grandal. <laughs> like, now, Fred, Fred, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and have a vote here. And, and, and our new friends, please feel free to, uh, to pipe in. How many of you actually like the idea of oatmeal and sardines together? <laughs> Both goblins raise their hands. Cassandra slightly raises her hand. Oh. Well, okay then. Well, I suppose if they're both healthy fats, then sure. Oatmeal and sardines it is. Okay. And, and so we're we're gonna we're gonna offer to as soon as you say Fred runs ahead, runs straight ahead, like right into the crowd. <laughs> okay. Okay, so <laughs> Damn it, Fred. <laughs> so we got we got Gail and we got Fred. Uh, Ethel, no, Gail goes with uh, Ethel right there, and they begin to cook uh, oatmeal and sardines. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to slowly, slowly, uh, and in the open and and as non-threateningly as possible, walk up towards. Moo, and say, I would like you and I to continue our conversation if we can. It's going to take a little while for the oatmeal to cook. Uh, fine. Uh, so, Moo Mo actually motions for you to, to come and then sit down. So, everyone's now sort of sitting around the camp. Hmm. Okay, so let me pull out my illustrations. Uh, I mean, I could also... Mm, I, I guess, well... We're going to assume that the audience knows what you look like, since you're the heroes of the story. <laughs> I can drop a link for those who don't. <laughs> <laughs> Never change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got it a theory? I'm gonna move you up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna move you up just so you're out of the way when I down. Okay, so I'm just putting pictures of them back up. I uh, I gotta figure out how to like not have to resize them all the time. Girls, just like the more the more they see these guys. The more likely my characters will survive, so I just need to keep putting these pictures on screen. Shh! 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 <laughs> I worked very hard on this. <laughs> Okay, so in in very short order, well, actually no, because of the elevation change, uh, the water takes a little bit of time to warm up. It does boil a little bit extra quickly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, while I'm conversing with Moo, I'm basically I'm just trying to suss out what part of her story was truth and what part was a lie. Okay. It's I I don't want to interrogate her, but at the same time I want to try to figure out what she's not telling us. Okay. The campfire game, two truths and a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever played that? <laughs> no, I have actually never heard of it. How does that how does that go? Is it is that kind of like 
I've oh, heard sorry. of this. You, you say three things about yourself, and two of them are tr true, and one's a lie, and people have to guess which one is the lie. <laughs> oh, I that haven't played like that before. Fun. Yeah. Uh, I have actually I've done that game. If it. you want, let's actually, that's actually a good way to do this. Um, so. I was going to say, this would be fun as our characters, though. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm gonna so we'll we'll do this game right now, okay? And so what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um Moo's gonna say three things about her. Um, you can ask her what you want about her. Just go ahead and ask about her, but you can't actually con converse with yourself. So uh, we're just going because this is gonna be sort of the conversation you have out in the open. So don't. Mm -hmm ask any questions or don't anything you say that's in character will be assumed to be in front of her. So if you make a side joke or a tangent, whatever, that doesn't matter. We'll assume that's not part of the actual conversation. Then what we'll do is at the end of the conversation you have with her, we'll assume that they go to sleep uh, before you and that you'll set up your camp a little bit further away from them and then you can discuss and you can participate and the audience can participate and sort of yell out what they think the, the truth of the lie is. Cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you want just about moot, right? You don't, because uh, it's we could do all of them. <laughs> well, well, I I can focus on Moo and the uh, and and other my my fellow adventurers can focus on other uh, characters if they if they want. What do you think? Yeah, that works. Okay, I have to write notes because I have to keep this straight. Uh, I, I'm going to mess up like I did with the ticks again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, I... I'm trying to make sure that I got all the names right. Da, 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 da. Okay, so... So the human is Cassandra. The the one with the the shawl, the, the, head, the head handkerchief, that's Ethel. Uh, the one with the ferret uh, and the hair is Tic Tac. Uh, the ferret's name will be Foo Foo. Oh god. Moo is the oh, leader. God. The hobgoblin is Pabu Bronze. And then the last one with the rabbit ears. Um the last one with the rabbit ears doesn't go by a name. She goes by a whistle. Okay then. So uh, let's see if I get a whistle. Sandra Moo. That's foo so the ferret's name is Foo Foo, and that was Habu Bronze. Yeah, Pabu right? and then Bronze. Pabu. Yeah, Pabu. Pabu. Actually, Pabu I don't bronze. know if I can do the whistle because I don't think I think uh, I think Discord actually filters out whistling sounds. So let me see if I can do it. Does. A... Yeah. Let me change that because that, that's going to be kind of weird. Do it a second ago though. Did it? I heard that. Actually, yeah. let me let me I actually do have a whistle on my desk right here. <laughs> oh God! If you don't, let me if see you don't mind, I'm I'm just going through and labeling each of them so we can keep them in our heads. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh, I thought. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, that I didn't. There was like a weird, like pixelated noise. Yeah, it was a squeaky noise. Weird. Yeah. yeah. That that is the whistle. I'm just trying not to blow it like really hard into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and just in case what my lips are capped that way, I actually say her name. What was the name of the the one with the squiggly hair and the ferret again? Uh, Tic Tac and Foo Foo. Tic Tac is with two Ks. Actually, no, we'll do one K, one C. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> My notes are in pen! <laughs> I'm done! At one point, in my notes, at one point,
point you mentioned that the leader is like a war veteran, so I wrote that down, and then immediately after you're like, she's lying, so I just scratch it out, and it's like the leader is a, and then scratched out, liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it adds authenticity. <laughs> what are you doing? Correct me if I'm wrong, DM. She's she's not exactly lying. She's more like she's telling a half truth. Yeah. So, so there, there's something there's something a bit weird about her story. Yeah. Um. Uh, so she is lying, but you're not quite sure where the lie is. So right. Yeah. That's right. where the two uh, two truths and a lie. So come in. So I'm gonna give you three aspects of her life, uh, of her life or her general activities and you're going to decide uh well i'm thinking we're just gonna do her because we're gonna end soon um, yeah yeah it'd be cool to pick up right on this game for the next session though i think that would uh generate a little bit of buzz <laughs> a fun game and a D D game if people want to catch that on the next session yeah Uh, and our characters would have to do this too, right? I I'd, I'd have to think a little bit on mine. Um, yeah, a little bit from Dagmar's perspective. Mm-hmm. Okay. Theory is sitting so far away. <laughs> I I can move a theory closer. I I don't know. I think uh. Uh, I think a theory's having a little trouble, like controlling her. I don't know the token, whatever. Oh no, I I didn't move her. She was I can put her closer. Um. Or, or was she stealthing? Is she stealthing? She can be stealthing. <laughs> She's kind of sitting in a corner with the hood over her head. <laughs> oh, being very mysterious. <laughs> she doesn't want them to know it's her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see. Moving along. You don't remember me. <laughs> I'm new. These aren't my friends. I did lie. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let me let me explain the three things then. Okay. So Moo explains that she's a veteran. Uh she is a war that she's a war veteran. Um and she has fought against the forces of the warlord. There's some sort of hobgoblin warlord to the north. Um kind of ransacking villages. And it's a little bit difficult for, for goblins because goblins either have to run away to flee or they join the the warring horde. Uh, so some some join, some don't. Uh, and Mu did not join um, and fought has fought quite a bit um, against them. Uh, but the, the fighting has taken its toll on her. And so... You can see that she, you know, she looks kind of the worst for the wear. Um, and you can see she never sort of like lets go of her uh, of her weapons. She doesn't have any armor on. None of them are wearing armor, uh, but she never lets go of her weapons. Uh, she was so that's the, that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second thing, she was born in the northern wastes. So that that would be sort of if actually let me see do I still have that map let me take that map I should have a world map. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Okay. All right, there we go. There we go. So, um, so Clark is in the southwest corner right there. Uh, and so six is about where the wastes would be, the number six. Um, so it's it's fairly dry, rocky, um, sort of rolling uh, rolling plains and rolling hills. And she explained that she grew up in a village there. Um, so and she she sort of tells you stories about her her brothers and sisters and and things like that. Uh, that's the second thing. Third thing. The final thing. Uh, after her fighting, she decided to retire. Um, but she didn't go back to her village. 
she just thought that was not a good idea. Um, and so she's come to Clark, and she now lives in Clark. Um, is trying to do the make the best of her life in Clark. She, uh, she vaguely remembers you. Uh, now that you, you're sort of describing yourselves, because she 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 would have been at the festival. Um. Uh. So she would have eaten some of the owlbear donuts. Um. What else did we do? Owlbear donut. Oh no, it was an owlbear claws. Sorry, owlbear claw donuts. Um, peach pie. Uh, fried potatoes. Okay. Um, and she would have. She's generally been a you know just a regular citizen of Clark or Goblin Town. Um, and she lives in a, a small room. Uh, that's part of a, a large. Well. Momo's goblin uh, dwellings in Goblin Town are sort of kind of half underground. She's one in she lives in a sort of apartment that happens to be more like uh with more human architecture to it and she lives in like one of the lower rooms. So does she live in the human side of town or in Goblin Town? No, no, it's like the edge of Goblin Town. Hmm. Since I'm a goblin of Goblin Town, would I would I have Known of her or heard of her before? Uh, you don't. You don't know of her. You, you vaguely might have seen her around town, but you don't remember her name. You don't remember anything about her. She's she's not famous in town at all. I have an idea of what I think she's lying about, but I want to see what my fellow party members think. Well, uh, but, uh, but before you discuss that, why don't you ask questions, though? I want everyone to ask her questions so that you have enough information to work with. Uh... Um, would I be able to do a history check to see, like, if I'd have, like, knowledge about what's going on to the north, like, it, knowing enough information to where I could ask her questions and then be like, no, she's, this is not true, or yes, this is true. Um, so go ahead and roll in a history check. Let's see how much you know. Can I also ask her a question? Yeah, you can ask, all of question? you can ask her freely. Okay. We're assuming that this is around the campfire and you're enjoying a heaping, steaming bowl of oatmeal and sardines. Okay. Out of curiosity, how is the oatmeal and sardines? Uh, it's pretty good. The oatmeal has a few like uh, walnut flakes in it. Uh, since fall, it's you know mid fall. Um, a touch of pumpkin spice, uh, and the sardines are oh. incredibly sp uh, salty. So moo. Um. If you were in Clark, you would have known the mayor of Goblin Town. I would assume. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of the mayor's puppies? Puppies? Puppies. She looks really confused. Mm -hmm. And she's like, puppies? I don't care Pup about puppies. I don't even know if the mayor has puppies. You don't know if the mayor has puppies? Yes. Uh-huh. Did you ever see the mayor with any kind of animal? Uh, the mayor... She kind of, like, has that irritated look on her face, and she's like, 
Doesn't he walk around with that stupid pig? Oh my god, she's telling the truth. <laughs> All right. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have our first truth. <laughs> now, I have a feeling I know what she was, the thing she was lying about. If I tell, I'm not going to say this out loud to everybody, but if I tell you the DM and I do an insight check, would I be able to tell if the thing that I suspect that she is lying about is the thing that she's lying about. Okay. Um, so if we're doing the two truths and a lie, I think mm -hmm. that's cheating. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, if we're doing D&D &D rules, then yeah, we, we could do that. I don't know. Which one did you prefer? Okay, I, I just I assumed because of the history check that we had to do a um, some sort of skill check as part of the, uh, part of the challenge. No, um, just... No, because the game itself, two truths and a lie... Isn't ah. in itself an insight challenge, right? So it's kind of weird to roll oh, insight on it, okay. right? Um, but I can give you some other information, like a history. Like I'm typing for uh, towards Genera right now. Because um, the the thing that I'm I'm wondering is she may be fleeing the fighting, but what if instead of fighting against the warlord to the north, she was fighting with? The warlord. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, same. We can ask her which, who she served under in her. Except she's already said that she was fighting against the warlord. If we point out her lie, then she's going to feel cornered, which we don't want. Does she know that we're playing a game with her? Or... <laughs> well, <I> mean... <laughs> well, this is this is all out of character. We're not actually... We're having this... This is a side conversation between the players. Right. I just yeah. wonder if she wants us to, like, tell her our guesses, and if, like, if this is a game, or are we just kind of, like, deciding that, like... Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain. I just... She knows we're playing a game, right? <laughs> <laughs> um uh you don't get much of a reaction out of her. She's she's pretty stone faced. However, every time you seem to mention like fighting and kulag, um Fred does whimper a little and kind of like mm -hmm. reaches out for Gale a little. Mm. I give Gale a sardine from my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Does Gail like it? Ah, <laughs> uh, Gail does the the kicking thing, book, 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 and like pecks at it a lot. Like add omega threes to those eggs. <laughs> is he is the is Gail sort of like poking at it, but missing like the chicken hey hey from Moana? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See now, now all I can think of when I think of Gail is that is. Hey, hey, from Moana, that skinny, that skinny ass chicken. Oh, I think I remember <laughs> that. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> that's who reminds me of Fred. Are you saying that Fred reminds you of Moana? <laughs> no, the chicken in Moana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Dinky Foot was in that movie. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Oh my God, it's coming back. It's all coming around. <laughs> Goblin Town's just Moana. <laughs> no. <laughs> Happy Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I can think of a, a, a couple ways that I can, or that we can suss out the um, one of the lies. What was the individual in charge of the refugee camp at Clark and were they do we know whether or not they were involved in any, any of the fighting against the warlord um oh good golly you're gonna make me look at my notes i do not remember that person's name i just remember that it was a really awkward name was it I, he had an orange tabby cat i remember that yeah 
Okay, I'm gonna have to look I was just trying to them. figure out because because I figure if she fought against the warlord, she might know this person. The other option is because is I could test the northern wastes thing because that's pretty close to Westgate where the where I'm from. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So the the officer in charge of the refugee uh, camp that was deputized by the mayor. Uh, his name is Zelix Tur Zelix Turd Riegs with a scrawny tabby cat that's he calls Orangey. Cute. We don't remember if he was involved in the war in any capacity. Uh I'll just say no. No, okay. Well then I'll since 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 Gretel is originally from Westgate, which is a little bit east of the northern waste, I'm gonna ask if she's heard about the plague that hits um that hit you know if if she was in the northern wastes when the plague hit westgate the northern wastes and what's the name of the other city up there on the river titor titor i i don't know the pronunciation <laughs> and i made it <laughs> yeah and and titor and I know I know that the I know that the plague like anybody near Westgate would have heard of the plague, but would have known that it only hit Westgate and not the Northern Waste. I'm just trying to I'm trying to do the same thing that my teammate very cleverly did, only in a less clever, <laughs> only in a less clever fashion because I'm exhausted. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not struggling Gretel, a little bit because I'm trying to make sure I that am. I get it straight. Um, so she re she remembers hearing rumors of it, but she didn't remember actually being affected by it. It seemed to be something that was sort of far and away. It never got around to her. Okay. So by process of elimination, that would seem to mean that she is lying about fighting against the warlord to the north. Yeah. Which means that if she's she either fought on the side of the warlord and then fled the fighting because she was forced to join the warlord or she's still working for the warlord in which case the last thing we want is for the warlord to build a fortification up here on the mesa this close to clark yeah thank you everybody for listening to goblin town see you next time yeah <laughs> <laughs> leave it on a cliffhanger yeah <laughs> dun 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 Oh shoot. Okay, so um, I, I actually do because I do need to cut out because I, I do got to cut out and I got to leave like real soon. Um, so I guess this we are going to end it here. Um, does any do any of you have any other questions or does the does the audience have any sort of suggestions? Like, no, you're wrong. It's a different thing. Um, I can tell because the, the DM does has some sort of tell. <laughs> Um, how do you spell tick tock, tick tack, tick tack? Uh, the way I'm spelling it, uh, just to be annoying is T I C T A K. <sighs> All right. <laughs> that was my question. All right. And I guess then we are gonna call it a night. Um, thank you everybody. Uh, thank you again for listening to a, uh, four archaeologists and an artist uh, play D and D, sort of, and go off on a lot of nerdy tangents. <laughs>
Um, hope you enjoyed us. I'll see you everybody next time. Have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Bye.